Hi everyone, it's Agnes and welcome to another YouTube and this is a very special interview. This is with Kamal Ravikant. Hello Kamal, welcome to the interview. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's great to be here. As I, as I told you, I discovered your channel early this year and I've actually watched some of your videos and I love how we were chatting earlier about how you make Neville's knowledge so accessible but you also create a feeling of hope. Yeah. And, Possible. And you make, like, I remember just the feeling I got from watching your videos, like, I felt good. Nice. You know, I felt good and calm. It was really special. So when you reached out, it was, I was actually kind of delighted. <laughs> happy to be here. It was um, right timing, right timing. And, and I, look, I was blown away when I read your book, your first book, Love Yourself, Like Your Life Depends On It. So much so that when I'm working with people one on one, it's like, right you've got to read Kamal's book and you've got to read Neville. And, and there's those two things that are just the main two things, because if you know nothing about law of attraction, if you know nothing about self-love, if you know nothing about, you know, conscious creating or any of that stuff, your book is such a great starting point. And I've mentioned it at least a dozen times on my channel. So the viewers are going to be well-versed in what, you know, we're talking about today because it was such a powerful message and a simple message and something that anybody can do no matter where they are, emotionally and mentally, I mean. So, yeah, what, what can we start with? I mean, it's just an endless conversation. <laughs> you know, it's actually interesting that, that, you, uh, <clears throat> that you, you work with Neville's work, that you actually teach that. Like, yeah. Covered Neville a few months ago. Yeah, I really feel like what he did kind of like unlocked the keys to reality. Yeah, and I've always been curious about that stuff because when I was when I came up with the Love Yourself practice, it was I was literally doing it to save myself. I wasn't studying anyone. There were no books on how to do. It. Like I didn't know if there were any clear books at the time on how to do it. And at the time, I was so miserable. I frankly I wasn't interested in reading a big fat book that just went round round in circles. Yeah. So, what I came up with and how it changed things on the inside and what really blew me away was, was that the life started to change on the outside without me doing anything to the outside. You know, mm -hmm. at first it was like you start using words like synchronicity, coincidence, after a while you're like, this is just way too much. Like there's, it's like, I really am in the matrix. Like there's like, it's like how I'm inside and how I'm, how I'm like projecting to the world is how like the, how life projects back. Mm. Um, and so I, but then I just sort of just assumed that this was the way life is. I'd kind of like skated along the fabric of reality in some way. And I was very fortunate. And I didn't talk much about it in the, in the, in the Love Yourself book, in the original version. I will in the next version, by the way, which I'm working on, we can talk about later. Yeah. Uh, was the fact that I didn't know how to explain it. And I wasn't trying to convince anybody of any beliefs. I was, all I wanted to show was like, look, this saved me. This is what, this is actually what transformed me from the inside out. It's so stupid, simple. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's so stupid, simple, any idiot can do it, you know, case in point. Yeah. And, and, and that's it. And then I figured people would figure and see on their own. I use the word magic. Yeah. In the book. And that's what I consider magic is when life just starts working for you. Yes. You realize, but that only happens when you inside shifts, when you're in, you're working, you know, when you, when you, um, uh, um, when you're basically like a certain way inside and that that's what the practice did for me. So discovering Neville was like, uh, I discovered them through Wayne Dyer, you know, and yep. he references them a lot. And then obviously that led me down the rabbit hole. And, and he was a special man. Like, if, like I cannot get enough of look, listening to his lectures, you know, like yeah. just, um, just this mission he designed to share this, you know, and, and with such purity. You know, and obviously he's got his biases and he weaves in the biases of his times and his upbringing. Yes. Right? And I think one of the things the, mo you know, the modern person has to do, uh, which is why I think, you know, like your work is so, is so helpful, is that you can even do it without, by removing the biases of the time. Mm. So mm. Your information. Yeah. Really what works. Yeah, and, uh, for sure. And I think the reading that was really, for me, explained why the love yourself practice worked and actually changing the outside you know yeah. that, at least for me so yeah. i'm just new at it, new at new at uh studying him but i'm just fascinated i'm obsessed <laughs> That's the only thing i read these days is if I yeah read books. are you listening to him on youtube as well of course of yeah 
because he's there's two in particular one's called demental diets and the other one's called rearranging the mind they're two that i go back to again and again yeah yeah, yeah. yeah they're real at the gym now you know i just love listening while i'm working out like, yeah just layering him in. yeah no he's brilliant and i think too with all the the new age teachers and people over the time well before the secret was written that they all talked about it in slightly different ways but neville was the only one that said god is your own human imagination and he talked about using that faculty to you you're basically becoming the state he talks about states becoming the state of what you want so if you're feeling poor you got to be in the state of feeling wealthy to attract money you've got to be feeling loved to attract an amazing relationship or having someone love you, which was, you know, what you did. You shifted states when you were, yeah. prior to writing your book, you shifted states. And the evidence is you change the inside, then the outside changes. And Neville talks about that in depth. And I love that. And how he talks about living from something. You don't think of it where you're here, it's there, and there's a big gap in the middle. You live from it. And what he means is you're living from the emotion of I am that, and Wayne Dyer talks about that a lot, I am, the I aming, I am whatever you want to be, you got to I am it, and that I aming is what then draws it to you. And all of that, when you start, you know, putting it, easy knowledge, but applying it, that's a whole level of, boy, how, how good can I become at this, and how good can I, it's like you're playing this game against yourself every day. Yeah, because you're you know, dealing with a monkey inside here. You know, yeah. literally, like I think we were designed with this monkey and we got to understand the nature <laughs> of the monkey that, that rather than frustrate the monkey, it's a monkey. A monkey does what a monkey does, right? Yeah. So that's why like, but why the love yourself practice worked for me um, was that I made, it a, I made it a consistent thing that I did, you know, like on my mind, right? Yeah. On my inside consistently. You know, let's be honest, all this is work, but it's not hard work. No. At times, times it feels like in the beginning, it feels like you're rolling boulder uphill, or boulders uphill in an avalanche. You yeah. know, like all the negative thoughts that have been just in us since, since you know, however long we've been on, been on this planet. Mm. But then you start to make progress. You make progress. You deepen those grooves. And then the, you know, the water starts to flow down those grooves. And then it becomes easier and easier until that. Be like today, actually, I was walking around outside and I was just feeling because I've been working on it because I'm writing, I'm writing the expanded version of the book right now. So I'm yep. really moving it hard and I'm working. I was just feeling it and I was thinking of something and randomly someone stops me on the street. I says, Oh, excuse me. Are you come on? You know, I get this more and more. <laughs> um, and you know, he's like, I love your books and thank you very much. But thing is what I was randomly just walking around feeling this love and feeling this, just feeling blessed, like feeling it. Mm. And, and, and this guy stops me and, and then he ends up telling me what he does. And that's exactly what I was thinking of actually at that time. I was like, huh, I wonder how I can like do that. And he does exactly, like guys literally, st I mean, I'd go to the cleaners. I had a teacher to go to the cleaners, you know, it's like the, so like talk about coming, but that's how life starts to work. Yeah. And I think what, uh, what Neville did was, he tried to explain a lot of this from many, many different angles and also from the language of his time and, and his upbringing. Yeah. Um, but he is a purity to his message. Mm. The guy wasn't trying to sell sell programs or this. He's like, yeah, come pay a bit, whatever. If you don't like it, get lost. You know, like I, like the, the you know, uh, he's like, I, I don't, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I just want to yeah. share, share, share. And he was almost obsessive about it. Yeah. That's when you know someone has mm. stumbled upon a truth. Mm. That's when they get a, almost obsessive that they have to share, you know. Yeah. Um, and Kamal, he's in your city. Like that's where he was. He was in New York and in Barbados, but he was in New York. Like it's like you're walking the streets of where he was. Actually, last night I was walking by Washington Square Park, and he mentions many times he used to live overlooking Washington Square Park. Yep. I'd love to find out what the address was. Yeah. Love to go and just to go stand outside, like mm. you know. Yeah. I find that. Um, yeah and he used to uh, dance he used to dance in new york too he was a dancer right. so be nice to find out where he danced as well yeah yeah, yeah. The church where he used to like they used to call the bad mystic at 48th street i looked up but that church was torn down ah so, okay i was i was all excited i was gonna go sit in there <laughs> and 
and meditate and feel Neville. You know? Feel Neville, yes. Yeah, but that's, you know, um, it's so interesting the intersections of these worlds. Like before the call, we were talking about how some a reader I met who said my book saved his life actually found it just at the right moment before he was about to kill himself by your YouTube video talking about my book. You know, just just this certain <laughs> section of life. It's it's amazing. Yeah. That is that is just mind blowing. Mind blowing. Have you still got contact with him? Yeah, I do. I keep in touch. Wow. Uh, yeah. And he's yeah. in he's in much better spirits. Yeah. 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 Like, and he went deeper to Neville. I think, um, yeah, I think once you find Neville, you kind of like don't go back. <laughs> I know. It's yeah. like a, like a turbo injection. It's, it just, you. It's, the truth. it's like with the loving yourself thing. You know, when I <laughs> saw the truth of how life shifted, my insights shifted. My, and I was not someone who like, considered himself, ever, ever believe, I didn't believe in the word love. You know, I was one of those guys, you know. Yeah. Like, embarrassing. Um, <laughs> You know, or self-love for them. I didn't know what that was. You know? Yeah. And so if I can do it to myself that fast, and that's how I wrote that book was to share very simply what I did. Mm. You know, that become, books become a phenomena. And I get all these emails. I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, tens of thousands of interactions of having readers. And I always respond back sometimes months late just because I, yeah. I have jobs, you know, day jobs and all that stuff. Um, <clears throat> but it's like, it's amazing because human things work for humans so if you share something that's human something that's on the nature of the mind that you that you could do any other human is the same mind it's the same monkey the details might differ the scenery might be different but we're still dealing with the same monkey inside mm. you know? and it, it's also but there's power inside that the, the only problem is we've been directing the power like inwardly in a negative way yeah like what I was loving myself did was I actually directed it outward. Like yeah. first inward, like the love inside, but what you notice is what happens and it just starts going out. Like yeah. you just kind of walk around feeling it come out of you. Mm. And I think life's going to respond. Yeah. You know? Um, and I think that's the same thing with, the, uh, with Neville, you know? You just kind of like first, I, I noticed in a lot of the forums, it, ne people usually come to Neville when they're in pain. Yeah. You know, Neville, it, like somehow they find him when they're in pain. But I think there's an evolution that happens. After a while, first you're trying to get something. There was a law. Mm. Try, try to get, you'd get what you lost. But what you realize in that journey, because I've been kind of doing that little, very compressed, obsessive Neville journey over the last just like four or five months, <laughs> is that there's an evolution in that journey, right? Because it usually starts with loss. And then you start to get work on, work on uh, doing the practices to, to basically try to get back what you lost. Mm -hmm. and, and then first you don't believe it, you don't believe it. Then a shift happens after a while you start to believe it. Like you have to go at it. This is mental work, which is the hardest work, right? The yeah. shift happens, you have to believe it. But then a very interesting shift happens. You realize that if all you do is focus on someone out of lack or something out of lack, you're making that, to use that as word, you're making that your God. Yeah. And you can't make anything else or anyone else your God. Mm -hmm. You are God inside. Yep. You are consciousness, you are creation inside. So yeah. to look outside for someone, if, you give, if, you're, if you're not worthy without someone, if you're lacking without that particular someone or something or situation, that then you will always be in that place of lack. Even if you get it, you will get it and there'll be lack and chances are it won't be as pretty as you thought, mm -hmm. right? But then I think that this is the evolution, right? So first it's like purely trying to get the person back, then realizing, shit, excuse my language, we're making them... I made this my God. Yeah. And that's shift that you just have to make it by yourself. Mm. Which is actually, I was fortunate enough to stumble into when I taught myself to love myself, where it was mm. purely myself. Yeah. You make it by yourself. And you just like, you know, because if you were really believed that you were kind of all consciousness, would you, how would you feel about yourself? How would you, what would you expect from life? Mm. Right? You would only expect the best. You'd only expect to be blessed. And so when you, then that's the shift that happens. And then this stuff starts just coming. It's a really interesting evolution. It right? is. But it's so interesting. We come from pain, but, but it's important not to get stuck in making these outsiders, outside things, our saviors. Yeah. Only saviors within us. 
Yeah. You know, whatever you believe, if you, if you believe in God, then, you know, it says that God is within us. You know, like the yeah. only savior is within us. Like, even if we get what we wanted, that's not going to save us. Mm. But if we save ourselves, yep. we love ourselves, mm. others can't help it. You know, and, I, and I've learned this the hard way many, many times. Like, <laughs> like, you know, so I'm writing the expanded version of the book now, seven years later, all the lessons I've learned since first putting it out. Yeah. And, and a lot of it is from making mistakes. Like, look, I got lazy, you know, things are going so great. That's my biggest weakness, right? I get lazy and I'm like, it's going great. Like, I don't need to do the, the mental loop, the exercise, this, that. You know what? Eventually that monkey wakes up and starts banging around again. But, but I then mm. become attention. And next thing you know, life's kind of not working for you. Mm-hmm. And, and if you do pay attention, it gets harder and harder. It and does. So it's almost like... It's like, you know, if you want to be fit, right? If you're fit, let's say you, you, you commit, you go to the gym like four days a week for a year, you know, you, you live a great, have a great healthy diet, you get in great shape, right? But then let's say you take a year off and eat just donuts every day. What do you think is going to happen? You know, your body's going to re- reverse. And the mind, I think, is even less, is more plastic than the body. Like it reverses faster because it's yeah. so ingrained over like since the moment we were born. Mm. I think it, it does. The one thing that I don't think we can bypass as long as we're alive on this planet is the consistency of whatever, mm. or whatever we're doing to make ourselves better, the consistency of the practice. Yeah. Or we can make it about just making ourselves better and making ourselves, you know, like come to terms with whatever it is that someone else or something else. Yeah. The rest becomes. Because, mm. like, yeah, my, I've had things fall apart completely because I stopped. But it took, the longer you do this, the longer it takes because you kind of like build those grooves. Yeah. Fall again and again and again. In fact, I show in this, in this version, like, here, do you really want to see how this works? Here, watch me fall apart. <laughs> and watch my mind and insight. And I write it. And then watch me rebuild myself so you can really learn what goes inside here. Really come apart. You know, the one guy who wrote the book who should yeah. be Right? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exhibit A. <laughs> yeah. I know. I, and I, Kamal, my story is very similar. I, you know, I've smashed myself around um, debt, being absolutely devastated in relationships and having work that just crushed my spirit. So I kind of nailed myself in every area. And you do, when you really smash yourself into the ground, you go, wow, now I understand why I was meditating consistently. Now I understand why this is a mental fitness and it is way harder than the physical fitness in a lot of ways because your mind will find you something to do. If you don't give it something to do, it will find you something. And it it doesn't go looking for positive things usually, naturally. (laughs) It's wired to look for the negative. It is. It is. It's strange. So it's it's consistent work. It's yeah. Consistent work, right. Yeah. There's no way around that. Yeah. But once it starts to work for you, you see the results. If this is a solution to life, this is a this is. Mm. Solution. I don't think, but there, I don't think there is like you do for a month and the rest of the life you're set. I don't think there's such a thing. It's not there no. for your body. It's not there for your mind. Yeah. And that's I think the, the fundamental thing I want people to realize also when I read uh, the next version. Yeah. About commitment and just consistency, consistency, consistency. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, you know, because it's personal responsibility. I've come to believe that I am the responsible for everything that happens in my experience. But also because I've noticed, because if I take responsibility for creating all of it, then I, I no longer, I can't, I, my victim thoughts go away. I mean, you stop feeling like a victim, then you're like, okay, then what do I do? Mm. I created this. What do I want to create now? So you start working on that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. and it's, it's very practical as well. It's yes. not easy, you know, it's easier to feel as a victim than not. It, it, yes, right. definitely. And, and so many people will listen to you because they're in the same state. <laughs> Look, I've been there enough, right? <laughs> but it never helps. And in the end, it's like, do I want to be better or not? Mm. Who's in, and, like, and I've learned is every time you get better, you realize your life is worth it, that you're worth it. You may not feel it at the time, but when you get better, you realize it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Have you got like a, well, a consistent daily something that you do on a regular basis to... I know what I wrote about in the book. Yeah. 
I do that. You still I, go I, back to that. That's good. Yeah, because whenever yeah. I let that go is when I start to uh, after mm. a while, but I do that. I go back to that. And I've added some other things like gratitude and like some deeper things. Now I've added Neville to it, you know, yeah. where I, I am. And because but but I'm doing what I'm doing is I'm kind of Neville uh, taking Neville and what I what I learned for myself and putting that together. Yeah. And and seeing how it works. I'm experimenting. Mm. My own mind. And if I'm experimenting with my own mind and my feelings, I'm experimenting with my life. Yeah. It really is the grand experiment because you see you see you start to see the feedback. Yeah. Start to see. But it is really interesting how uh, usually like even people when people find my, my book, they're usually at some low. I mean heck, I wrote it because I was at a low and then I figured out how to get out of it and I, yeah. and I share. Uh, but you you realize you learn if there's one thing I can share with people, you learn it's about you. It's never about the other. It's about yeah. you. If yeah. You yourself. Yeah. If you get that stage where you just like trying to get that thing or that person and realize, you know, you're coming at it from, you're making that thing your God. Mm. Now make your, go back to your God. Yeah. Which is your inner self, your consciousness. Yeah. If you go to that, the yeah. rest just, you start to realize that the rest because also when we're trying to get something lack, it's coming from a place of unworthiness. You know, if you shift this and you start to feel the worthiness, whatever it is here, it starts to move. Yeah. On its it own. Does. And that is what you're saying about, you know, tying Neville in with this, his whole, everyone as you pushed out is that whole concept of, it's like everything on the outside is just a giant photocopier of what's going on within you. So when people show up doing whatever you think they're doing to you in relationships, usually your boss, your partner, your mother, whoever, you got to look at what am I actually projecting out? And, and you don't go, why are they doing that? You start asking yourself, hmm, if that's in front of me, what have I got going on within me and my thoughts and my feelings and my beliefs that they are doing that in front of me? I'm a corresponding magnet here right now i got to look at what am i doing and then you work on dismantling that and then the outside changes but you got to stop why are they you got to stop that question and you got to say they're just me pushed out everyone's me pushed out and neville just talked about that in at length and i remember when i first heard it i was like what i couldn't even wrap my head around it but over the years and looking at it and really saying oh that person's not treating me well. I'm feeling unloved, unwanted, insecure, not a priority, not important that I don't matter. I've projected that out and that person's just picked it up. Have you ever read this? There's a great short story by Andy Weir uh, called The Egg. Have you ever read No. That? It's amazing. And people can find it on YouTube. Uh, very different renditions and readings of it. It's like seven and a half minutes long to listen on YouTube. Okay. It's amazing. It's, it starts off... Um, the first sentence is, you were, I think it's something like you were on your way home when you, were not, when you died. So it's a guy who dies in a car accident. Yeah. And he's on the other side. He meets this, this other man who just looks like a regular man and says, who are you? And I'm sorry if I'm giving away the thing, but it's still worth reading. And I think it really applies to what you were talking about. And the guy says, I'm God. Um, and he says, oh, what about my family? Will they be okay? The guy's like, yeah, they'll be fine. You know, honestly, your wife will be a little relieved. Things weren't working out. She'll feel guilty about feeling relieved, but she'll be relieved. And your kids would always worship you because they were not old enough to have contempt for you. And, and so, like, you went out to just at the right time. He's like, okay. So he's like, what now? The guy goes, God goes, well, I'm going to send you back. You're going to be reincarnated. He's like, oh, so the Hindus were true, were correct. God's like, everyone was correct in their own way. And so it leads on and he says, okay, where are you going to send me? He's like, oh, I mean, now you're going to be a Chinese girl in 540 AD. He's like, oh, you're sending me back in time? Well, there is no time. There just is. So it turns out what it is, is the guy finds out that there's only one hen and he's been recarded as everyone. So what he learns is he's like, wait a minute, I was Hitler? And the guy goes, and all the millions that he killed. He says, wait a minute, I was this. And, and so he's like, so every person you acted with kindness, it was actually you and a different reincarnation. Mm. Every single person, you just going back. And he said, the whole point of this is your evolution so that you become God. Lovely. And this whole place is just an egg. Where yeah. 
where you're being formed. It's beautiful. Oh. And it's so interesting. Every single person, every single thing you interact with. Is yeah. Just, it's a beautiful story. It's called The Love Egg. It. Where? I'll well, put a, I'll put a link to it down below because I think that's um, yeah I'd like to have a look at that. Mm. Yeah, he really nailed that concept. You know, that's the thing about storytelling. You know, you get across human truths in a way that it connects and it makes us feel and makes us bigger, makes us expand more. You know, that's the whole point of all of this. Is like why share things? You know, is to connect, to share yeah. our lessons, our truths, so mm. that you know, whoever's in the receiving end our own self expands. <laughs> yeah, our own self. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Oh, lovely. Lovely, lovely. It's so good to talk to you. It really is. It's so good to talk to you. You've actually come across my radar a few times. And it's, it's so like when you <laughs> well, and, and, and you have come across, when I, when I really, really got to hear you for the first time was with James Altucher, because I listened to him. He's my, when my eyes need a rest from the computer, I just put on him listening to whoever he's interviewed, and he's done a few interviews with you, which were so fantastic, because you two both know each other, you know, really well, and the interviews are always a bit quirky and odd, <laughs> which I always enjoy. Yeah. So I'm going to put the links to those down below as well because I think they're well worth listening to and, and he's just a wonderful organic <laughs> nut as well. <laughs> he's, he's, he's engaged. It's all about it. Really. Oh, he is endlessly, endlessly quirky. I love it. Yeah, a beautiful yeah. human being. Yeah. He's in New York too, isn't he? Yes. Yeah. All the um, interesting organic nuts are in New York. I don't know. We're at <laughs> Well, I just happen to be in New York right now, but I'm everywhere as well. Um, I think, you are, you know, oh, you move around a lot? I yeah. Do, these days. I think, you know, especially with the modern age, you know, we just like connect yep. in a way that wasn't possible before. It's beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah. It's like, so you know, great. You were, um, I watched the interview you did with uh, John Kerendyke. Yes. Right. Is that correct? Yep. I mean, he's where? It's, uh, in Af where in Africa? Uganda. Uganda. I mean, I watched that whole thing. It was amazing. That guy is a trip. He's awesome. I know. Well, he yeah. was my he was my mentor. Really? Yeah, he was he was the one that was well, he was a he was more well versed in Neville than I was and I was, you know, really looking for someone that could well, coach me from a Neville perspective and that's we became you know, friends over time, but he was, he was firstly, he was my mentor. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, so here yeah. Is this guy from Uganda, I never would have had a chance to listen to, right? Yes. Learn from him. What a beautiful soul. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. He's, um, he's, a uh, he beats to his own drum. I mean, he often disappears for six yeah. months at a time and he just goes and does imaginal scenes and works, totally in his own world in his studio and you don't see him for six months he drops off the internet totally and he just literally evaporates for a while <laughs> yeah, i think it's needed more and more these days i think yeah in luxury is actually peace and quiet yeah and disconnection rather than connection definitely definitely and making time for that every day to just surrender and let go and allow you know, I think is really important because we are so much action figures, a lot of us. It's yeah, good. I think like, it would have been like things like Neville, right? If we can create almost systems, like, I don't like using that term, it's for my Silicon Valley days, right? But we can create almost a practice that like in the morning I get up, I do this before I go to bed. It's like brushing your teeth, you know? Yeah. It's you know, about brushing your teeth. It's been drilled into the same thing. I get up, I do this for my mind. Mm. I take this break, I do this for my mind. And when I go to bed, I do this for my mind. Yeah. Be the Neville imagination scene every night. You know, why, why lose the opportunity to go to sleep, you know? And you yeah. Sleep, right? Yeah, um, definitely. Oh, right? Make it that simple so it's consistent. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean. Practice with consistency. Yep. Yeah. And continually tweaking. Well, it's a bit, it, it really is a bit like how you, because I remember you said you wrote Love Yourself, like your life depends on it, and then you went through it and you chopped so much out, so it was very much... Yeah, and I remember when I was doing 
uh, imaginal scenes, I was thinking, I've got to do that same thing. I've got to shave this down so it's really, really simple, whatever I'm imagining. And at the time, I wanted to break free of working a job in Sydney, Australia, and I wanted to live in London and visit my family in the south of France. And I thought, well, I can't have a job if I want to do that. I have to literally. And I'm thinking, how am I going to imagine that? And I was thinking, okay, I've got to walk down the street in London. I've got to walk down the village in France. I've got to be near the opera house in Sydney. And it got really complicated. And then I thought, okay, how do I do this really simply? And I remember just sitting down with a white piece of paper and I drew an isosceles triangle, which we've never used since school. And I drew a black triangle and I wrote Sydney, London, South of France. And I just drew a little cartoon plane. And I thought, ah, that's a simple imaginal scene. And within a short period of time that happened because it was reducing and distilling the imaginal scene of too much content within the imaginal scene was was getting too much it was too much of a fuzzy target so doing that black and white images which for me being visual was incredibly striking the white and the black drew that and then that has become the trips that i make on a regular every two to three months i move around so that very simplicity within that imaginal scene helped to create it once i tightened it up so I think, yeah, so that is a really, well, I think over the 30 years of imagining, I've got it down to very simple, very uncluttered imaginal scenes. It works much, much better for me. Yeah, yeah. And I think one of the things I'm learning, and actually I learned this one with the lovers of practice, which I'm going more into the, in the newer version, is the feeling part of it. Yes. You know, because at the beginning, I wasn't doing any feeling. I was literally just doing mental. So yeah. But mental leads to feeling. Whatever yes. Was, you can almost hack it. And because we have to, you know, a lot of people fought me on this. But when I said try it, and I made them try it, they're like, oh, my God, you're right. We manufacture our feelings. Yeah. Your feeling if we want to. So yep. if it's a in your head, you can stop that feeling. And yep. Feeling, you know, it's like we manufacture them. So if you start actually manufacturing feelings of love and people are like I don't know what that feels like but try it just whatever it might feel like right eventually it starts to become deeper and deeper and these days for me the feeling of self-love is feeling of, of being I walk around feeling blessed yeah that's how you kind of feel about life you're when I so so with Neville and these scenes I think he talks about like it's not just the scene but the feeling of being in a feeling of living it from the place right yeah. same thing with self-love if you if you worked on feeling of feeling the love not i want to feel self-love or feeling it yeah. it just becomes a cycle and before you know it you're not having to force it it's not fake it's real exactly. you know? it's, it's on its own yeah but i love that triangle thing that's brilliant yeah that was that was that took it sounds so simple and obvious but it took me about two months to reduce that imaginal scene to something more simple and um another thing i used to do was i'd look at a passport and i'd see the passport stamps whereas nowadays they don't even it's all biometric we don't have passport stamps anymore but i remember i remember seeing you know the the france passport stamp the england london england and then i'd see sydney australia and i would think oh i opened it and i didn't my imaginal scene I'd, I'd open the passport and i'd go oh there's france and there's and i'd see the stamps and that worked for, you know, the first 10, 15 years. But then we went into another age of biometric and I thought, hang on, this isn't relevant anymore. I've got to reduce and readjust my travel. So came up with the next thing. So, yeah, it's just making it really simple so that the mind can spend less time on the mental part, as you talk about, and it can drop down more into the feeling of being in the state of having it, whatever it is. So, yeah, that was a good one to, um, you know, it's just a good one to, to improve simplification. Yeah. Yeah. Where is Neville journey now? I mean, that's amazing you've been doing it for so long. You know, I... Yeah, my Neville journey now, well, I think it's, you know, I, I felt so trapped for so long 
in terms of creatively and around work and around you know, just not being able to see the people I love in different parts of the world, I was so intent on freedom and, and also creative freedom because I'm a real creative person. I'm, an, I'm a night owl. I need to work late. I need to get up late. You know, I still do exercise this, that to look after myself meditation, but I need to work within the natural constraints of how I am. So now it's expanding to, you know, and I remember thinking who the heck is going to pay me to listen to me talk about Neville. (laughs) And yet it's my work, you know, it's my work. It's my, my, well, it's full time if I want it to be, I sort of, you know, do about four or five days a week these days, but it is, it is now just expanding and sharing the benefits and, and through stories and through very simple English, Neville's stories as well as giving examples of the experience of how it works because sharing knowledge is not that difficult it's sharing knowledge that's been applied to give an experience of an end result of something that somebody wants that's something that people want to hear about so yeah so continuing to do that and Look, I still do my imaginal scenes every day. I love going to bed. I love lingering around in that world because I'm highly visual. That's always been my most, of all the five senses that, you know, Neville talks about using the five senses, the visual and the audio, imaginal sound and imaginal sight are my two strongest ones. So I put that into pretty much all my imaginal scenes And it's just extending out more and more. You know, now it's imagining for other people because you get to a point where you go, okay, you know, it's not just all about me. I'm going to imagine this for my mom or I'm going to imagine this for, you know, my auntie who's sick or whatever. You just use it for just the pure good of other people because you have a more peaceful heart. You're more relaxed. I'm not in a rush anymore. I was in a rush for two decades, like about everything. Just I need to get there, wherever there is, whereas now I'm much more relaxed. It's more about slowing everything down. I'm much more of a turtle than a rabbit. I love my days. I love, you know, spending time at a slow, steady pace. I never really say to people, oh, I'm really busy because I'm not. (laughs) I can just cruise on second gear. And it's so, life is so enjoyable. Mentally, there's peace emotionally there's calm I love the projects I work on I love this to me is so much fun I love interviewing people it's so interesting without questions planned out I love just seeing where the the path takes us you know I mean my life is astoundingly good it really is so and I still still I am I'm addicted to imagining I still love it it's still it's it's reality It is. Isn't it? Like that feeling and imagining. Yeah. And there's a couple of stories of Neville's that I still, after 30 years, go back and reread and reread and reread. And most of them are in the law and the promise. Um, The story about the doctor and his wife, the story about the woman in New... What's that? The wife who had the building. Yeah, the doctor and his wife, they wanted to build the block of flats because working through the mechanics of that and dissecting how they actually did that. And then you go, okay, how can I apply that to the situation I'm trying to manifest? Look at how they, they talked about, you know, I'm not going to call the contractor because if I'm living in a completed building that's already been built, I don't need to ring that guy on the sign across the road. I just need to imagine it, let it go and see, you know, where this goes. And that it's like what you're saying, you meet that guy in the street and then you're thinking about something. He he tells you exactly the thing you want to hear. You didn't know you were going to, you couldn't even imagine that even if you tried. So it just, it just, and then these things happen. It just reinforces. <laughs> like, like, look, you're not insane. You know, no, you're not insane. And just how you, even just how you, you and I met, you know, like, like just this random, I mean, the fact you could have been reading any other author in the whole world, but now you're reading Neville, you know? And it's like, I read your book and then I see you on James Altucher. So it's like all these little pieces it's like the particles assemble itself for, for the little, you know, thing to hatch. So yeah. I love that. Fundamentally, it's like, 
we have to um, bet on what is, we have to decide what is the nature of reality. Yeah. I do that myself, and I've done that, like, what is the nature of reality? And then let me bet on it. Because look, I had this, as far as I know, this one life, and let me bet on what the nature of reality is, because then let me live it. If I believe that the nature of reality is, and my thing is that the nature of reality is, is that there is no reality. You know, like, yeah. <laughs> me i will bleed and all that sure right there is that there is that physical part but you know you can go down the deeper you know i was talking with a friend of mine the other day about you know i have a degree in biology amongst other <laughs> degrees i never used yeah. and when i took uh, cell biology and biochemistry organic chemistry when you get to see you know you don't just come to the cellular level you go down to the molecular level and just this intricate dance of molecules that and, and, and then you go to the atoms, you go below that and to nothingness, this intricate dance of all these part, particles that aren't even, even particles, right? That, that then go and make this. You realize underneath this is nothing. Mm. There's, there is like this. So the fabric of reality, everything is solid, is really not. The foundation yeah. is, is anything but solid. Yeah. If that's the case. You could say, okay, what is that? You could say that is consciousness, that is God, whatever you want to call it. And mm. what is the permeant of all of it? You know, I, I, I'm not a relig- I don't believe, I don't like, I'm not a fan of organized religion, but I think it serves its purpose and it gives, um, but I think what, you know, as people try to describe in the old days what the nature of reality was and how to, how to live in it, right? Uh, faith, what is faith? You know, like it's, it's the observer effect, you know, like what do you believe what the wave function will collapse into, what particle or wave? Mm. So, so for, for me, I basically come down to like, what, am I, what do I believe in and let me bet on it? And then let me live it. How do I live it? I can't bet on the, 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 the layer, underlying layer of reality and, and live it in a physical way. How can I live it? I can live it in a mental way. I can just assume mm. that, this, that this computer in here somehow taps into a frequency or whatever. Now I'm going to just use random words. You know, that, that somehow affects that underlying layer. I'm just going to believe that. Screw it. And then I'm going to live it. So how do I live it? Then what do I want to experience? And I'm going to start using this, running this computer for that. Mm. And you know what? It works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? it does. It's, I mean, I've, I've just made up a lot of random nonsensical <laughs> stuff. You know, trying to explain what I really think. But then it comes out of just like, let's just figure out. Let's just bet. Look, I believe this or not. Believe it, then live it. And how you live mm. here and here. Yeah. You know? And then, then watch. But, mm. you know, that's where, um, and, and I think that really, and, and if we can, if you can bypass the, the crappy steps that I've gone through, is if you start with just let me work on myself, not on what I'm missing. Mm. You know, and the more you work on yourself, the more you're like kind of even first, when we're missing something, we need it. We desperately need it like crave it need it we're, we're miserable we're not yes. it. We're, we're just the worst shittiest versions you know broken versions of ourselves yeah. but when you're not needing that when you're working yourself mm. and you start to this wholeness you realize i don't really need that i may want it i still want it that's yeah. it and you know what whatever this is feels it yeah whether it's a human being or whatever yes it is, yes it, right? it feel, it's like so the best advice, if if lacking something is working, work on thyself, <laughs> you know. Yes. <laughs> and it's almost like take, just take time for yourself. Work, you know. People say like, I'm taking time for myself. Well, yeah, work on yourself. Yeah. And this thing will just happen easier, and you may realize in the end you may not even want it. Yeah. You know, I'm too good for this. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's a reality. Mm. It's, uh, but I think I think Kamal, it's almost like the more you work on the loving the self and, and getting yourself into a peaceful state and getting yourself into, you know, the, the rabbit rather than the turtle, rather than the rabbit, you you, you desire less things. Like as you, you feel, you feel good more, you feel more at peace, you feel more calm, you feel more emotionally stable secure so the desire for external things i find over the 30 years it's got i needed everything before and and i can never get it quick enough whereas now over the years i don't really need that much stuff i don't really desire i still have desires and i still play around with imagining and and creating things usually creative stuff creating something interesting or saying you know what i can do with neville or trying to use myself as a guinea pig so that i can 
use a story to help somebody else. So, so it's kind of like a human um, experiment on my own self. It's a game I play between me and me. That's where the fun is. It's not in acquiring stuff or getting someone to love me or, you know, getting a, you know, yes, I have cars that I drive. Yes, I travel and all those things. And I, and I love that. But I'm at, I can be at peace wherever I am. I can be calm wherever I am. I can feel loved wherever I am. I don't, I don't need that stuff like I used to. And that I think is the most priceless thing I've ever been able to achieve. It's, it's peace. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. What's interesting, <laughs> I found that when I'm really doing deeply to loving myself, um, <clears throat> Some of that stuff, I still have desires, but my desires shift to more of, of who I am rather than what I think I, I needed or wanted. They shift, they become more real, like more aligned with who I am. Mm. It, so when I achieve them, they, 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 they feel more fulfilling. Yeah. Because we can have lots of desires when we achieve, and they're literally like that moment of something lasts like six minutes and then it's done. <laughs> Yeah. You are when you have that. Yes. It just fills you. It just yeah. Feels good. You're like you know. Yeah. It's. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Kamal, good conversation. <laughs> good conversation. I'm really enjoying it. And look, thank you. Oh. For my book, you know, it's really, really. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna put the. Um, Kamal, is the best link to put for your book uh, the Amazon link, or have you got a yeah? Okay, have you got a website as well? Yeah, but I never do anything with it. You don't do anything with it. So Amazon's the better. I'm going to put the links to all your Amazon books and to your YouTube channel, Only the, even though you've got only a few little YouTubes up there. So, uh, <laughs> And I'm going to put the two um, wonderful um, interviews you did with James Altucher because they're superb. So I'll put those down below too. People can find me on Facebook or Twitter. I'm pretty active there. Great. I'll put the links to all that. I'll find you and I'll copy and paste that all down below because the look the the viewers on my channel are gonna just be have their socks blown off when because they're so well versed in your book they're not going to you know it's gonna be That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you all, yeah it's great it's great well is there anything else you want to say before we go yeah because as we discussed before let's do another one yeah wait. Here, because by then i'll have finished spending the book and i'd Excellent. love to share because uh, there were things from the first one I realized after all these interactions that how do I make give even more value? Yes. So not fill it up, but like really create something that anyone who's read it before goes, oh my God. Like, and it's from, from all the interactions I've been readers asking them, ask, ask me questions, realize there's certain threads that I need to actually answer. Yep. So I would love to share that, you know, right. when I'm done with it and, you know, it's ready to come out. Yep. So we'll do this later in the year as well, or anytime. Actually, this is yeah. a, this is talk about Neville. We're going to have a student, <laughs> this, is a new student. this would be great. It would be fantastic. Look, it's a, um, it, yeah, it's just, honestly, it just, this stuff just starts to rev you up and then you can't sleep. I remember when I first read Neville, that first book, and I was feeling really horrible and I, and I couldn't eat, couldn't sleep because I was so emotionally traumatized by all this stuff. I used to read that book, The Law and the Promise, and I used to get this electricity through my body and it was like, I, I can't, I've never had it since, it, but it was the most unbelievable surge. It was like I was getting this, like an like a iPhone put on the, on the dock. Just I was being charged all night. I don't think I slept properly for a few weeks, but I was living off the charge of that book yeah. from reading those stories. So, yeah, look, we can do this. Anytime you are free, just email me and we'll do a... You know, we'll do another to be continued. <laughs> I, I, I might be in London in October. If I am, like, let's meet up. Cool. That would be lovely. That would be lovely. Yeah. Okay. And you never know. New York's been calling me for a while. <laughs> so. US, like, there yeah, yeah Sounds please. Good. It'd be a pleasure. Lovely. All right. Well, Kamal, stay on and we'll say goodbye in private. Bye, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the interview. I'll put all the links down below so you can find Kamal directly. And I will see you in the next YouTube.